The topics we discuss are many. No story too bold to talk about. Strictly our own opinions. But they are opinions from people like you. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Naked, Naked Podcast. Podcast. It's been a really strange day, so I'm here to get weird. It's your girl, NJ. Trying to figure out why I haven't been making my own bookmarks sooner. What up? It's Keelan. Uh, hang on. I need to roll for mine. Uh, it's a four, so uh, I think I failed. On this intro, it's your DM Tekka Allen. Is it <laughs> nap time yet? Hey, everybody. It's Ethan. I need to roll for that, too. Uh, eight. For uh, nap time? Yes. Ain't no nap time. It's a fail. <laughs> I'm going to fail at everything and go take a nap. Bye. <laughs> Oh, gosh. It's Monday, guys. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. Um, Wednesday, Texas has some, I guess you could say, liberating news. Texas is reopening. Yeah, and Wyoming announced that today, too, also. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, so you could see uh, Republican governors start opening up all their states pretty soon. Them damn Neanderthals. Damn Neanderthals. I thought it was really interesting that this announcement came out just like a day or two after we had just talked about, you know, what does moving on look like, um, personal mm -hmm. accountability, and, you know, all that jazz. Do you think they watched the Naked podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I think Definitely. <laughs> we set the standard for everything. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we talked about this, but ah, I know we talked about this before, and uh, you know, I I started thinking about it more, and I had some pretty radical thoughts on you know opening up and and everything that's going to involve with opening up, and you know, I'm looking forward to everything opening, you know, all the businesses, you know, a, a, a kind of revitalization of the Texas economy. But I still have to worry about everyone else who's not going to be wearing masks. You know, and, and you're right, Ethan. Like, ultimately, my thought process came to, you're right. We have to do our due diligence, and we shouldn't have to be told by someone else. Well, you know, the think... CDC finally updated their numbers, and they mm -hmm. say that masks only had, like, a 1%, like, there was only a 1% difference if nobody wore a mask from us wearing the mask. I didn't see that. I think like too, like there's I think Texas and like some other places like Wyoming, they also reopened. I think Kentucky too, like sent their kids back to school recently. There's reasons for optimism. So like vaccinations are on the rise. I think um had more than 90 million administered so far. Um, you know, and our reports of coronavirus cases have fallen across, you know, the country from January alone. So as more people get vaccinated, you know, I think like we'll kind of come to this comfort level. But at the same time, I do feel like I think it's up to each state and maybe city to decide what's best for their for their citizens, like if your cases are super high, maybe some regular, you know, maybe some things stay in place. But if you are consistently seeing cases fall, then maybe it's time to start loose loosening those restrictions. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I think the opposite. You know, at this point, they asked for two weeks. We gave them a year. Uh, the data, I mean, come on, hospitals are low capacity. I mean, we get to the point where nurses and doctors are like where we are are low on work right mm -hmm. so i mean i think we got to the point where we can handle it and it's time to stop hiding and face this issue head on and let's just come on move forward with life stop hiding you're right i don't think so as like hiding like yeah you say you gave two weeks or you, you know they asked for two weeks we gave a year but you don't solve a pandemic in two weeks um, right. Yeah, I but I mean, like we gotta like, necessary. we gotta like learn to live with it, and we're not gonna learn to live with it unless we start living. I can understand that because from what I've heard from like the flu vaccination every year, it changes every two to three years. You know, it might just be one of those things that we have to get, or you know, it's an opportunity to get a 
vaccination every couple of years with the new strains. Even though the new strains are more contagious, it doesn't make them more deadly. Um, so I think that ultimately opening and, you know, people going back to work is the best thing. I mean, we have things current and going through current law right now for unemployment. Well, what if we just give them the opportunity to have their jobs back? You know, most people want to work. Let them work, in my opinion. Yeah, no, you're totally right. And I, I just want to bring up the the thing that the current president did insult and demean a lot of people with his comments, and you don't really see it covered or even talked about. I mean, if that was a former president, it would be every headline in every which way you could possibly write it, you know? And here we don't even get a follow-up news article or, you know, anyone even asking a question about how our president could behave this in this manner. So what did he do? Uh, Joe Biden, mm -hmm. he, he made a public statement and he said that the people down in Texas have Neanderthal thinking for opening up to and not following what he tells them to do. I don't feel like that's like productive in any way. Yeah. I will say I'm highly offended. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting the amount of backlash that, you know, we saw on like social media and Facebook of the residents in Texas, you know, hearing this mandate and they're like, how could you? I'm still going to wear a mask. And I'm like, great. That's what we yeah. want you to do. You should still wear your mask. Nobody is telling you it is OK to take your mask off. The state of Texas is just saying we are not forcing you wear a mask which is good yeah I mean, and, and that's where i was happy with the situation right because nobody is putting up a sign banning masks right mm -hmm. they're just not putting a gun to your head saying wear a mask if you want food you know mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, yeah no reason oh i say and of course businesses are still work requiring you to wear a mask to go in there um, restaurants. Well, it doesn't they take have effect till tomorrow. The mandate ends tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the 10th. Oh, beginning the 10th. Okay. No, I know. I just, meh, you know? Yeah. yeah. That was very eloquent, but it's. <laughs> no, you're totally right. I mean, that's just kind of, this is kind of how everybody feels right now. We're just kind of like, it, it's been literally, I think, what, March 16th? is a full year mm -hmm. in quarantine and lockdown. And we're in this past year, like regardless of everything else, I feel like scientifically we have made major strides. Not only do we have one, one form of vaccine, we have multiple vaccines. Um, and I think that we learned a lot. Flu season was like nothing because people practice better hygiene. And I hope that those traits and character, you know, characteristics stick you know, I know most people will probably get too relaxed, but, you know, I hope that we learn something. So I was telling Alan, he, he had, he cut himself and he was telling me the story and I said, did, was your first thought? So what did you learn? Right there. <laughs> to not <do> this. <laughs> so uh, did you hear but, that? Oh, I was going to say on, on that, the one year anniversary, right. We're coming up mm -hmm. and that uh, Joe Biden will give his first public speech on the one-year anniversary yeah i saw so that. the state of the union address mm -hmm. no he, he's not no, no, he no. will not be giving a state of the union he will be addressing the american people so most likely the way they the way they worded it with what he was doing it will be a video message from him to the people yeah. uh, oh. but no he he will not be doing an in-person state of the union at, it has not been announced yet uh, Darcy O oh, over from YouTube uh, says she always wear masks or he, my apologies. They always wear masks and they ask, do any of you wear masks? I wear them for sparkles. Yes. <laughs> I wear it when I go in any major store, but as soon as I'm outside, I get it off. I got to breathe <laughs> that. I got to breathe that UV light and kill that virus, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have two at my desk. Usually oh, yeah. I have three because normally from here, I like get my 
my mask and my headphones, and I go pick up the kiddo from school. And, uh, oh, they also said Happy National Woman's Day, ladies. Happy oh, National thank Woman's you. Day. Thank you. Happy International so, Woman's Day. I was so close to sending Alan the uh, Deadpool meme, but... <laughs> one it's all good but it happy international Women's Day. Yeah. <laughs> they celebrated all of the holidays i feel like um mm -hmm. like a little bit like ron swanson when he gets nominated for the woman of the year award and he's like but i am woman of the year i have an award that says so it's right here leslie it says happy woman of the year <laughs> Anyway, yes, Darcy, to Wait. answer your question. Oh, I was going to say, hey, shout out to Snicker Bass for your uh, four months up. Yeah, my boy. Ooh, whoop. Whoop, whoop, four months. And nice. hey, Scary. Yes, we've always had the intro. And what's up, Ryzen? I see you there. Just trying to catch up <laughs> with chat, guys. Sorry. Ryzen's here for the big announcement later. Ooh. Ooh. Stick around for that one for Great. later. <laughs> the Texas reopens. I mean, my next door was like blowing up with people, um, like having different opinions about it. But I mean, ultimately, it comes down to personal responsibility. Like, you wear the mask, you do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Great. Other people don't. Well, you can't control what other people do. And I've learned that more and more over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. In my personal life. Um. So what else? Just, what other news you about do Texas you. reopens? Yeah, you do you boo. <laughs> I'm, I'm like excited. I, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm super excited to like go to a movie theater or not. Well, not even a movie theater because we don't really have movie theaters anymore. They're all the like bowling movies and arcade. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always wanted to go to the Evo that opened on the north side, but then the pandemic hit like right after they opened. So, oh, is yeah. that the one on 35? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The kid has been in there with his grandpa. That place is awesome, dude. Yeah. Sorry. But, you know, oh, go play God. some laser tag and do a little bowling. Let's have some fun. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm ready to lighten up and not be stressed out every single day about this new issue that is going to kill us all. You telling me you want to have some fun? Yeah. Just a little fun. Just a little fun. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I can't you, believe it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what else is going to be fun? The next stimulus bill. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was just getting to that. Thank oh, you, Alan. Um, so, yeah. So, stimulus bill number three was passed by the Senate, and it's on its way back to the House for to vote on tomorrow with their amended... <laughs> you sound like an MC3. <laughs> hey. <Sorry. laughs> that is a... Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Rising Cross in our, in our Twitch chat said, you sound like an unsavory buddy. Um, and that's from one of our book club uh, books that we read recently, so... Uh, check out officialmillennials.com for more info. Anyway, uh, saving this bill. It's going back to the House. They're going to vote on it tomorrow on the Senate changes. Um, pretty likely to pass, um, but they, of course, had to drop some things from the original bill, which shouldn't have been included, in my personal opinion, like a $15 minimum wage increase. Mm. I, I said it from the beginning. Every stimulus bill should just be one page, and it says, to every 18-year-old, American citizen, you get fourteen hundred dollars. Thank you. Have a good day. Bam. There shouldn't be yeah. any. There's no need for any paper to say anything more than that for a stimulus. Or yeah. six hundred pages to be read on the House floor to pass it. Like six hundred pages is excessive. Yeah. That's... <laughs> well, <laughs> the, 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 the last that? one was like four thousand pages. Like the last, the mm -hmm. last stimulus. The the big one, the six hundred dollar one, was like four thousand pages. How? And, and the rep, yeah, and the reps only had like an hour and a half or to two hours to read it before they voted. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's ridiculous the process that we allow them to ha or process our bills. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. 
So what was in the Senate changes? So just some highlights of the stimulus. Um, if you're an individual taxpayer, um, it's 75. If you make under $75,000 a year, you would qualify for the 1400 um, payment. And if you file jointly, um, I believe they send it back with, if you make under 160,000 married and then um, 120,000 if you're qualify as head of health household. And of course, come in the child tax credits. So, so uh, what do you just, think about the thresholds? Yeah, well, on, on the thresholds, did they do the where they were tapering it off as you get higher? So, like, if yes. you're over seventy five thousand, you only get like six hundred or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, that sounds fair. Yeah. I mean, I so... I still get the money, so I'm good. <laughs> I yeah, just, I think there's a lot of back and forth between like that question of like what should be the threshold because a lot of people would be left out. But personally, I'm like, if you're making 80k a year, probably okay. <laughs> it's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, but in all fairness, it's all of our tax money. You know, it, mm -hmm. no matter who you are, you're, if you pay taxes, I guess you deserve access to it. So that's okay. why. I, I'm I'm totally for it. If we're gonna treat everybody equally, then just send everybody that's 18 over a stimulus check and call it a day. It's all I don't get why we need all the rest of this hoopla or limits or blah blah blah. Yeah. Yes, I know that would mean uh, Bill Gates gets fourteen hundred dollars and he doesn't need it, but at the same time, when are we going to start treating everybody as equals? Uh, something else included into the, um, the bill is continuing on the reduced tax burden um, for households earning less than 150k. So I guess that's like your, I guess your tax relief that you've been seeing on your paychecks the last couple of months. And of course, with with uh, vaccine news, it would provide 116 million doses to be distributed in the U.S. Um, and then I think that kind of plays into Biden's nationwide vaccine plan, which I think costs about six or 160 billion. Do, does anybody know what the plan is? Like what they need money for? I get. I would just say oh. distribution and setting up setting up sites like pop-up sites to help distribute it quickly to get through all the phases I, but i mean from what i understood from the last bill they gave the money to the state and the states were supposed to set up do the distribution sites mm -hmm. like that so why do we need a national plan like why can't we just continue to fund the state plans i mean the states so, are going to know better what their citizens need than the federal mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. i would agree with that um, I think that was something that came from the national plan, um, but I would have to look that up. So, yeah, that's our stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just really um, excited. And I think it's funny that because, you know, in school at this point, because I have my associates, the government will no longer offer me Pell Grants. Um, if they, they do end up sending this $1,400 stimulus, it's going to pay for my summer school. So guess what, government? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all already noticed the rise in prices of everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking about that. Like, I paid two thirty nine for gas the other day. Well, that's energy policy, not the stimulus. But I'm talking about, like, food. Oh. Like, I noticed that, like, the bill at HEB instead of being like 150 has gone up to like 200. Yeah, our grocery bill was probably about 30 to 30 to 50 dollars more than usual. Um and I think like yeah, we have seen that inflation. But I was just kind of chalking it up to we have to buy gluten-free and that's kind of more expensive than regular stuff. Yeah, so. yeah that's my fault. <laughs> Not your fault. <laughs> I, I have noticed that uh, certain items have gone a little bit quicker. Like, it's still... Milk and eggs are still really elusive. And I understand, you know... I haven't had any issues. To... Now, so, I should... So, I went to Walmart, right, sa Sunday, mm -hmm. right? I went and picked up some stuff for the garden. 
And then I ran by Walmart and came home. And I was like looking for milk. All right, cool. You know, where's the organic milk? Where's it at? Where's it at? <laughs> and it's, I can see it in the crates in the cooler. Like you can see them, but mm. no shelves are stocked at all. Oh no. And there's just like the regular whole milk in the, on the shelf. That's it. Everything else is locked in the freezer behind it. Like you can see it, but you can't buy it. <laughs> Yeah, my um my H E B lactose free milk has been um gone. So I've had to drink like, lactate and spend like four more dollars on milk. <laughs> and lactate's the worst. Like at least Mutopia is not too bad, but lactate's bad. It's not Mutopia. It's like a regular H E B brand of lactose free. Yeah, milk. yeah, I know. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Mutopia. Chocolate Mutopia is where it's at. <laughs> oh yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm just sad that amazing. <laughs> the what? Chocolate milk. Everybody talks at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's the talk now. No, I think like with the the Texas freeze, like that was the only milk available was Mutopia chocolate. And I was like, no, like uh, leave that for the lactose free people. We don't get very many good things. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I grabbed two. <laughs> Yeah, but I think more people have discovered how awesome it is. <laughs> but so that's the annoying thing. Like, so we get the uh, organic uh, whole milk, right? Because it lasts like three weeks instead of a week. But if you go try to buy a gallon, the gallons always they don't sell very fast, right? So like the gallons always going to expire in a week or two weeks. But you buy the half gallon and you get like three to four weeks out of it, and it's like, well, just buy two half gallons, be done with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me that you're uh, in your late 20s, early 30s without telling me that you're in your late 20s slash early 30s. I'm bitching about the type of milks I buy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a favorite pot. I have a favorite uh, cup. Burner. Burner, you're right. Spatula. <laughs> I have a favorite cast iron skillet. <laughs> oh, my God. He's so yes. fancy. He has more than one. I do actually. <laughs> well, he might have more than one switch soon. Oh, right. so I'm gonna start off with updates for the Nintendo Switch. Um, there have been a lot of people analyzing the firmware that was recently installed in the Nintendo Switches, and people are coming to realize that the firmware that's being installed on the current release Nintendo Switch, both on the original version and the updated version with the better battery left and screen all have code in it that enables them to do 4k but it doesn't refer to their model number it refers to a completely different model number which points us to the nintendo switch pro being able to do 4k people have analyzed the code and they've kind of come to realize that it's not a true 4k experience it's upscaling upscaling uh to quickly define it, basically making an image larger than it appears to be, so you can make 1080p upscale to 4K. And the other mm. thing that we found out recently is that Nintendo is working with Samsung and NVIDIA to be able to power the next iteration of the Nintendo Switch. They've made an order for 100,000 screens to be delivered over the summer to Japan, which puts us at about an, an announced date between you know, late August, early September. And the code specifically in the current firmware points to NVIDIA graphics, meaning that they're no longer going to work with AMD. They're switching it up, which is interesting with NVIDIA trying to do things for miners and gamers and you know, kind of falling short. So, question for you. Is sure. Nintendo Switch still the number one selling console? Currently? You know what? I don't know. It may be. I mean, there, there's hardly any Xboxes out there, and there are rumors of PS5s coming to shelves this week from uh, Target employees, so I don't know. <sighs> I'll find out for next time, though. And some of the rumors... It that is a Switch. It is a Switch? You Googled it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, because I remember they were talking that in 2020, like 90% of consoles sold in Japan were Nintendo Switches. Mm -hmm. 
it was the only console you could really get without having to go to someone else who's selling it for an obscene amount of money. Well, you know, but also it's just like Nintendo, I mean, I guess has taken over that spot. Mm -hmm. It's. it's I, I think this, the Switch was a game changer that they needed to like step back into being a serious console. And it put them in a powerful position because not only have they released a console before the pandemic, I mean, the Nintendo Switch is three years old. But they've also been able to keep up with demand. Yeah, there were some switches that went, not went missing, just were well, harder to come Well, let's say the by, first three but... years, you couldn't get a Nintendo Switch unless you found, like, unless you stumbled upon one, luckily. Yeah, my Nintendo Switch, I had to search for. <laughs> I had to go to four different targets before I found one. And they had one I was sorry. Left. I was totally set to play uh, Mario Kart the other night, and then we never got to it. We only I know. played Among Us. I know. Oh, I was really excited for Mario Kart 2. <laughs> oh, I like, I'm excited control. for it. Like, it's still plugged in, ready to go, man. Oh, sorry. Mine's right here, but I was playing Link yesterday. Uh, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> um, the other thing I kind of wanted to touch up on rumors is with the release of a Nintendo Switch Pro, which they're estimating, you know, winter 2021. Holiday season 2021, we are also expecting Breath of the Wild 2. Supposedly, there have been rumors, especially from uh, PH Brazil that I talked about in an earlier episode. So it looks like these, his, uh, his predictions are actually coming true. It, we may see these at the end of this year. But I know I'll be in line to buy one. Hopefully, I won't have to buy one from a, from a scalper. Don't buy no, it from a scalper. Fuck no. Yeah, we just wait in that aspect. But I think, too, like, it's exciting because, uh, okay, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I was so excited for that game to come out. And then playing two-player, like, it just, it's, the Switch is not powerful enough to handle those graphics at that level. So I'm hoping that the new Switch that we have coming out, you know, would be better in terms of, like, handling that power. Um, and I don't know. Has has Nintendo has dropped holiday launches before, right? Mm -hmm. Like have. GameCube and stuff like that. So it's yeah, not completely I mean, uncharacteristic. This the Switch dropped in like third uh, uh, March twenty seventeen. I thought it was November. Mm -mm. March twenty seventeen. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to now, buy one when it was released. Now the uh, a question I got for you: Would it be possible for them to put out an updated dock? Like you know. Mm -hmm. Like the dock itself helps boost a little processing power or maybe helps boost the graphics a little bit. Yeah, it pushes it up to 1080 using um, AMD I, uh, video but, technology. But I'm saying, like, can they put out an upgraded dock to help compensate the older switches? I don't think that would be possible. Um, in order for a dock of, you know, to push higher quality video out the Nintendo Switch would have to be powerful enough to be able to, to push the processor up, the, the, the code to it faster. So that, that's where the issue is, because the, bo the bottleneck wouldn't be the Nintendo Switch not being able to produce a good enough video at that point. If they do release a better dock, it would be the Nintendo Switch itself, because it can't process all of that data. But there's no way to like put a, you know, an extra processor in a dock and help, help mm -hmm. juice it up a little bit like that? I mean, there, there there are computers that rely on two processors, specifically servers. It would be possible. I I, I don't know. That that is a really good question. I, I never thought about that. But I know that the be Nintendo Switch. Nintendo. Yeah, I know that the Nintendo Switch Pro would also be a mobile console, and instead of having the regular six point two inch display, it would have a seven inch display. Be See, because that's what I don't like about the lights. Like, I like the detachable controllers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do too. If only they got their Joy Cons to work without having to like mine. Look at this. I don't even like have to do much to get this guy to come off. See, and this uh, my left Joy Con consistently becomes uh, disconnected from the switch uh, when in physical uh, mode. Mine doesn't do nothing. Mine. Oh, that one comes off. See. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know what? That That's your left too. one. Yeah. I've been thinking yeah, about my right one's like solid. Stuck. 
but yeah. my left one just pops off here. Yeah, mine does the same thing too. Uh was Alan was saying that um, the part that makes it click is plastic, so it's easy to break, but you can um, add in, like, metal parts so it doesn't. I was going to try to show you guys, but you can't really see with the shadow. So Especially you're with saying mat. somebody needs to buy me a metal 3D printer so I can 3D print that metal part? So they make those parts? They're $4 for, like, a pack of four. But he needs a two hundred dollar three D printer to print that. And I need a two hundred dollar three D printer. Buy itself. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll buy itself. Oh my god! Think about the D D campaigns we could have. I'm, okay, I'm fine. Oh my god. Let's get a... We're gonna make our okay. own dice. <laughs> have y'all ever looked at what it'd be to have a brass miniature? It's like a hundred dollars. What? Yeah. Makes sense. I was just telling NJ. It's not even gold. <laughs> it's not even gold. Worthless. <laughs> I was just yeah, telling. Turn your fingers green. Sorry, I was just telling NJ that I was in a from a first world country. <laughs> I need my D and D figures gold plated, or I'm out. Okay. <laughs> I can CC have them gold painted. The fucking best, okay. <laughs> Listen here, guys. Reel it back. <laughs> anyway, I, sorry. No, you're fine. I was I was just gonna say. Um, I was telling NJ that with some of my uh, stimulus bill money, I was gonna buy a three D printer, set it up there. True story. Can Can you network it? Yeah, you so can. I can cinch it. Yeah, you yeah. Can. I can send straight to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll create a VPN so we can all do that thing. <laughs> Sweet. Get some good uh, rest, Raisin. All right, good night, you're Raisin. Just waiting, in the middle of the night, you just hear... It's going to be an eight-hour thing. <laughs> we'll find out what Ethan printed in the morning. Oh, that reminds me. Um, just waking up to dildos. If, if that happens, <laughs> we're going to have that, words. That'd be the first thing you print. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make sure it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, other than Nintendo and its Nintendo Switch Pro line with the possibilities, um, I, do have, I do have a new update on the Pokemon Legends game that we talked about last episode. It's going to have an open world concept now. So instead of following a set path to go to your gyms and do everything, you can go to whichever city you want, which I'm, I'm, a, I'm really excited for it. I thought people were talking about that mad because they copied Breath of the Wild or used the same layout, I guess you could say. Graphics pack. Yeah. So, I mean, we're getting better games from it. Breath of the Wild was an amazing game. It would it only makes sense for Nintendo to try to monopolize on that as much as they can. I love your response. Okay, and we're getting a many, <laughs> many more games. Yeah. <laughs> What's the problem? Smarter, not harder. Um, all right. Well, that's cool. Any other Sorry. Nintendo update speech? Nah, that's pretty much it. All right. You guys ready to talk about it? The Always. season finale of WandaVision. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my god, it was so tell good. Us. Um, as somebody who doesn't know anything about, you know, the backstory, what's happened in the comics or anything, I thought this was a phenomenal season finale. Um, I had seen headlines where a lot of fans were disappointed. But I thought for for this show, it was supposed to be, and that's helping set the stage and lead up to more pro Marvel projects. Um, we got to see the interactions between White Vision and Wanda's Vision, and huh, Wanda's Vision. <laughs> 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 and I thought the scene between these characters, it it was awesome um bringing in the the ship theory you know if you remove the planks is it still the same ship and mm -hmm. the way that white Hindu, white vision handled it um you know just going off and 
and trying to decide it because he is a new being. He's a new creation. Um, so I think for a lot of people who especially like Wanda's and Vision's relationship, it'll be interesting to see if he goes back to her or if he moves on in a way. I think he'll go back because he got all his memories. Like he, you know, he, he says, oh, I am the Vision. And then he f- flies off. So like, I, I think that somehow he'll find and help her work through what she's doing. But at the same time, I don't think, I don't think she, like, she's going to love her vision. Like, yeah, that's, that's vision, but that's not her vision. In a way, I really don't want them to come to ba- come back together romantically. I think it'd be great if they came back together as friends and helped each other. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see her either do her own thing for a hot minute or find a new love interest. Or she doesn't have to have a love interest. She can just be a strong, independent woman. I like that answer. <laughs> Full of chaos. <laughs> chaos so magic. I, I think that they will come back together. And to be honest, I wouldn't be disappointed. But like the whole ending scene of like her closing up her hex it was so beautiful and so moving that she's just like you know i thought i lost you once like and i i got you again like it's not a goodbye it's a next time until next time and i was just like totally blown away by that like you can tell like the feeling and the empathy and the passion and the compassion you know between them and it's it's odd for you to think because vision's not human right like he's man-made and self-aware um so it's a little like weird to think about when you start processing a little bit more but i do think they'll come back together for sure well can we talk about agatha (laughs) yes i love agatha and i really i hope we do get to see more of her down the road especially Yeah, I, that's. I I guess she kind of played her part more or less. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, Scar Wanda, well now the Scarlet Witch, really is like she surpassed her in that moment when she pulled all her energy back, and then mm-hmm. she pulled Agatha's energy into her. I think she surpassed Agatha. She might have not took Agatha's energy, but she definitely took energy that Agatha stole in some point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but just the simple fact at great. the end where Scarlet Witch is able to be, you know, in what is what do they call it? God damn it! Uh, at, in her astral body and still be fully conscious in her regular body, just shows mm-hmm. how powerful she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. not even the Sorcerer Supreme can do that. Like he has to be asleep. And he can project his consciousness. Mm-hmm. But she can split her consciousness. And I thought was- it was really great that she was finally learning about her her powers or what she can do. She's finally learning history and gaining control. Honestly, yeah. the entire episode was amazingly done. I I don't think that I could have done that any better. You know, not just the episode, the whole series. It was perfectly planned. It gave you just enough. It it towards the very end, it felt like a traditional Marvel movie. Which I I was kind of happy for. And those I was okay Mm -hmm. with how it ended, but at the same time, I felt like it really like they had the opportunities to really do something different and you know, expand some storylines. And most of those were, you know, you talked about the fans being upset because, you know, they were like, all right, let's get some mutants in this place. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we might have got one. Or, you know, let's let's do this. And no, it was just like all the big hype ups that everybody was anticipating, none of them came through, really. Mm -hmm. At the end of the show, she kind of just got a big power boost and then wrapped everything up in a nice bow, nice bow and pretty much left where she started from. But, you know, 
I read somewhere or NJ pointed it out. I, I don't remember exactly how it, it came to this idea, but WandaVision was always about WandaVision. It wasn't WandaVision and the introduction to mutants or WandaVision and Agatha or WandaVision and, you know, something else. It was WandaVision. Yes, we the Marvel now has the capability to be able to introduce mutants, but I I do like that they kept it about Wanda. I think they'll probably if if they do anything with the mutants, I think they'll probably bring it in with the multiverse of madness. Mm -hmm. Well, but That's like, okay, so speaking on your point right there, right? Mm -hmm. After the show ended, right? I looked at Keelan and I was like, well, this just felt like a really long intro for Spectre. <laughs> like Mark and Rambo. It, it just felt like this was a huge uh, lead up just to introduce her. Like that was the only purpose of this show. You know, at some point, I thought that they would introduce Mephisto, who's Agatha's husband. And that never happened. No, it was... Uh, the the As guy that was playing yeah Rand, playing Evan yeah. Peters yeah Rao Rao thank you the Rand. man child <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm glad that they're introducing Monica Rambone into the Marvel universe but at the same time you know I I don't know if they were gonna introduce something I didn't think that was the only thing they should have introduced you know like if they were gonna introduce her as a mutant then why didn't they just introduce like, why didn't the, like, at the end, the hex blow up and then it sent out a shock wave and now we have a bunch of mutants kind of thing, you know? Like, there was, there was so many things that could have happened that didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even was uh, expecting so much and was so disappointed. <laughs> I know. I really was expecting Ultron. Like, I, I just thought it was, was like, too. yeah, Ultron. And then we just get, White vision. You know, white vision where they just vision just asks him one question. He goes, You're right. And we're on the same side now. Oh, well, wait, he unlocked just... his memories. I, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Personally, I about, like, like the during the show and like, I kind of argued about it. It was, <laughs> he says, my directive is to destroy the vision and then they have that whole scene where they're circling each other and he gets his memories back and he says i am the vision and then he takes off and part of me was like is he gonna destroy himself because isn't that his he just directive? Flies the or will his conscious take over he just flies, well, yeah, just flies into the sun and destroys himself well he did he did repeat the line so of what the uh the colonel guy said we need a weapon that's easily controlled or whatever. So I, I think mm -hmm. he was like self realization right there. Wait, they're just trying to use me Control. as a weapon. Use me. Mm -hmm. And nobody puts the vision in the corner. Nah, nobody. <laughs> Not even himself. <laughs> we actually we have, what, like a two week hiatus until Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? Mm -hmm. So not this weekend, but next weekend, the 19th. Yeah. So. Oh, we got our vote. It was this weekend, wasn't it? No, we have one week from when this episode airs. It'll be one week on the podcast part. Mm -hmm. What? What? When when our episode is released, it would have been a week since the One Division episode. No, my question was wasn't. Falcon and Winter Soldier originally supposed to uh, start on the twelfth. Oh, I've I've heard oh, like so know. many dates. I can't even yeah. tell you that. I've heard the twelfth, the third, like all over the place. From originally, yeah, it was like supposed to be Wandavision and then the Winter Soldier, like the next week. Like it just picks right up. All yeah. right. Oh. Next week is uh, when Winter Soldier will premiere in Disney Plus, March nineteenth. And they did show in the trailer. They show the Falcon in his uh, Captain America outfit. Ooh, I haven't seen nice. the trailer yet. I'm excited. His red, white, and blue Falcon suit. So, I mean, just a quick question on that: Were y'all upset that Bucky didn't get the shield? 
No. A little arm. bit, yeah. I feel like I feel like he would come into something of his own. Like, like it's Bucky, not Steve Rogers. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's supposed to go Steve Rogers, Bucky, Steve Rogers, then to Sam. Mm -hmm. In the comics. So they kind of skipped Bucky and went straight to Sam. I'm okay with that. I'd say it's one way to just enough. speed up that timeline. Well, yeah, but I mean, when they showed Bucky with a shield in what Civil War, I think it was, like he, he does mm -hmm. the pose with the shield, you're just like, hell yeah. <laughs> like, let's get Bucky a redemption arc. He might have killed a bunch of people and worked for Hydra, but hey, let him let him repent and save people. <laughs> let him repent. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Were you team Cap or were you team Iron Man? Iron Man. Tony all day. Cap. All day. Yes. Cap was completely right. The reason why... But, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, he was right... Cap was completely right. You know, the safest hands are always your own. But at the same time, you got to have some sort of responsibility. Like, you have mm -hmm. to, if you want to be the hero of the world, you have to surrender a little bit of your freedom to the world. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're giving that up. I agree with that. <clears throat> what were you going to say, Andrew? I kind of feel like it was a very. It was a very like Batman approach, you know, like Batman had kind of had a fail safe for the Justice League. I kind of feel like that was kind of Tony Stark's reaction too, is to have a fail safe in case anything were happen. He's like, you're dealing not only with superheroes but like deities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy. We're only one planet, you know. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy has definitely shown us that in Captain Marvel that it's not just us, and worlds are easily destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the end credit in WandaVision. Oh my god. Monica goes to meet credit. the Yeah. The I thought squirrel. that was a great setup um for that next phase. Um, mm -hmm. cause it shows that yes, we're gonna be able to get to see more of her and her powers, and that she might actually be able to go out to space, and that's like just super exciting. Yeah, they, uh, I guess I was saying that I think they're going to play off the secret world wars with it, which they kind of, you know, you had your secret Avengers and then they go into the secret war. And I think they're going to play off some of that, which I'm kind of excited to see. Keeps I was totally interest. not happy with Captain Marvel making the Skrills good people because they're not. Yeah, I was just trying to find um the scroll that uh scroll. The, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that Monica talks to at the end of the of the movie. But I can't find her name. Uh with a scroll who has been disguised yeah. as human law enforcement. Yeah, that that's all I know. It's just a scroll. Exciting. So with her powers, will she be able to like see them? Since you can see different spectrums, probably. I mean, she knew immediately who. So who she I'm was. confused. Mm -hmm. Did she? Um, how did she come into her power? Was it just the radiation from Captain Marvel, or like what was what was that about? How did she get her power? Uh, from the hex when she was going through the hex multiple times, it mm -hmm. mutated her DNA. Uh, That's how Darcy explained it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what made everyone to believe that they were going to introduce mutants to the world because they were talking about her being mute, a mutant, more or less. Do y'all think that we'll see a little bit more of Darcy with the Thor Love and Thunder movie? Oh, now yeah. That, yeah. Uh, She's in it. Back? Yeah, she's, she's already confirmed for it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Do you think we'll see uh, Thor's old love interest? Lady Sif? Yeah, I, nah. they killed oh, no. her off screen. Oh, no, not not Lady Sif. Um, the Enchantress? Natalie Portman? Portman? Natalie Portman, thank you. I was trying to think of her name. Oh, she, yeah, Jane. Yeah, she's, yeah. The, she's the main one in Love and Thunder. She's oh. going to be taken over as Lady Thor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. 
I've seen it's a couple so of articles really? talk about how uh, great she looks yeah. ripped. Yeah, she. Uh, they did it at Comic Con. They, they he handed her the hammer, and she officially became. Well, she. They don't want to be called. Di- or Marvel doesn't want it to be called Lady Thor, but in as Guardian culture, Lady like Lady Sif. That's like what they call it, it's a title. So she would be Lady Thor. Yeah. I mean, she becomes she becomes Lady Thor in the comics. And then it passes yeah. on to their child, I think. Their daughter. Daughter, yeah. yeah. So what is Thor <laughs> gonna do? Is he just gonna fuck off and find himself? He, yeah, he at that point, I remember he retired to be king of Asgard. He was on the throne. He gave it to the Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but in the movies, he gave it to Valkyrie. So it's like I don't know how they're gonna play it out. Because. Mm. Yeah, last we saw, he went off with Rocket. Yeah. Uh, was Guardians. Yeah. Everyone yeah, knows he... who the captain is. <laughs> <It's weird>. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it kind of, it, it seems that they're actually um, matching up with some of the comic lines here. And I'm excited for that. You know, any, any single time that Marvel tries to do justice via the comics, they always do a really good job. So I, I'm not too worried about it. I'm more worried so, about DC on, fucking up everything else. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking on justice, this week the Schneider Cut drops. Ooh. I've never seen the original. What's that? I saw my first Superman movie. So, yeah, preparing for Justice League, the Schneider Cut coming out. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Disflora. We've been watching. So Keelan has never seen any of the DC movies besides Aquaman and Wonder Woman, and Justice League and Suicide Squad and Batman. the Batman. With I, uh, well, I said Birds you haven't Frank. seen anything but Aquaman and Wonder Woman. <laughs> so we started and we okay. So first we put on Justice League, right? And I was like, well. You wouldn't really understand what's going on unless you watch Batman vs. Superman. So then we put on Batman vs. Superman. I was like, well, you wouldn't really know what's going on unless you watch Man of Steel. So we had to watch Man of Steel. And then uh, now we got to watch... Why did you subject her to the movie? Oh, she was <laughs> enjoying it. It was, my it was super boring to me. Yeah. I was like, she the only reason like I need to watch times. is for the Flash's character. Oh, that's like the worst version of the Flash I, ever, too. Mm-hmm. The worst version of Barry. Yeah, like I love uh, Batman or Superman. Your mom is Bob. My mom is Mark. Let's be friends. Dude, I don't know. I didn't care for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I I told her. I was like, "You're gonna watch the movie, and then you're finally gonna get so many references. Like, why'd you say that name?" <laughs> <laughs> Like saying go watch the Speaking newer DC, Fantastic Four and uh, liking it. I, I agree, scary. So <laughs> Keelan just liked the uh, shirtless see... muscle rip scenes. What's that, NJ? It's not my fault they did close ups, okay? <laughs> it is Henry Cavill. That's what I can say. One thing about <laughs> uh, the DC movie universe is that they really, they really know what the women want, right? Like Aquaman. Even uh, Batman vs. Superman, but Man of Steel, they, they really give what women want for those movies. About time. Equality. I didn't I didn't personally care for those movies, but I we started watching Titans on HBO, and it's a phenomenal series. We're nearing end of season two, and like it makes me want to learn more about DC um, and like the background. So Alan gets like super excited. I'm like, why are you freaking out? tell me like, what's the backstory here um, so like i think now that i've watched that and i enjoyed it if i rewatch those movies i'll probably understand and like them um uh, because i didn't really know what was going on like fully you know like we're the gonna, lore yeah. behind it we're gonna go watch we're, so, we're gonna go so and watch batman who's the first villain in titans it's um um deathstroke with dr light yeah Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you have to have Deathstroke or Slade in there. Like, it has to be. Yeah, especially with Robin. So, are Same they doing storyline? And I want to talk about it today. So, which Deathstroke are they doing though? Are they doing Slade or are they mm-hmm. doing uh, his son? Slade. Slade. Okay. Sweet. Slade Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's they so do much use I Jericho. Want to say, but it'll be like a giant spoiler for you. Yeah. His power is super cool. Mm-hmm. He can um he can uh like project his conscious into another body and take you know take over their body. And he's a sweet kid. He did not deserve anything to happen to him. <laughs> who who do they have on the team on the show? Um so the original Titans, which Wander Girl, Dove, Ho- well, I guess in this universe it's Wonder Girl, Dove, Hawk, um, Aqua, Lad, and Robin. And Aqua Lad, his name was, what was his name? Um. Oh my God. Uh. And he was Garth. He yeah. uh, Death Death Deathstroke killed him, and then that's kind of like their bout with Deathstroke at that point was um. That's what broke the original Titans. And then now, like, the storyline picks up Raven, which is, her name's Rachel in the show, Starfire coming to Earth, them meeting a Beast Boy, and then Robin kind of being up in the mix as, like, a little bit older and a little bit more mature, and he teaches them how to control their powers. But they all have to come together to help in the whole Deathstroke debacle. You also are they using see- uh, Dick Grayson, or are they using Todd? Both, uh, Both. Dick Grayson, but yeah. Robert, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I-, I was just gonna say Dick Grayson, traditional who transitioned into Nightwing, and uh, Jason Todd. You actually get to see him young, so I-, I was really excited for that to see you know two Robins instead of just one or the other, because we only get he wasn't one or beat the other. to death with a crowbar. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know that storyline. He's such a yet. fucking whiny bitch. He <sighs> is. Even after he gets mm-hmm. like he comes back to life as the Red Hood, he's he's mm-hmm. such a little like, oh my god, Batman, you killed me. It's like, dude, it was the Joker that killed you, really? You think that's gonna like? Come on, yeah, come on. You knew what you were getting into. Season two gets into Blackfire. And Starfire's yeah. drama. Like so that's been really interesting. It's really good. You guys should watch it. Mm-hmm. So did uh Blackfire make a bunch of men fall for toxic women again? We can either confirm or deny that. So that's the always joke. <laughs> like every the joke is that a lot of men's uh effectuation with toxic women started when they picked Blackfire over Starfire. Oh. <laughs> we've only met blackfire one time so far and it was kind of like a hologram and um starfire is definitely to her sister <laughs> but like starfire is huge in the show right like her physical stature is big yeah she's she's mm-hmm. tall like an amazon and one thing that was a big gripe for us was costume choices in season one. Um, you know, I was super pissed at how they tried to portray Starfire, but I, I do have to, you know, say they do make up for it in the later, at later in season one and into season two. They do, a, they do a good job at doing justice for the characters. They also show Superboy. Superboy is a product. They take Cadmus Labs took the DNA of Batman and Superman, or no, no, Superman and Lex Luthor um, to make Superboy. So he has like these like really awful, terrible qualities, but super intelligent. And then on Batman's side, he or Superman's side, he has like you know all his powers and whatever Superman is, but. He can't control his powers. Do they let him and fly? It's really he's not sad. supposed to fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, like super jumped. 
but he did yeah that's fly. what he does mm -hmm. yeah he, he can't jump but he can do the super jump one thing that he can do that he couldn't do in either the comics or both animated series is he has laser eyes now but i'm trying to remember if in young justice he has laser eyes or not yeah he does in young justice okay because that's like how he makes his escape in young justice you're right i just started rewatching that i'm already in the later seasons anyway yeah because they put out season three on uh hbo max i think i'm almost done with it well so what's the big announcement ladies so much we've been waiting for like an hour <laughs> puzzled go ahead and jay no you take it away no go ahead and with that, we'll end our show. Right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's the producer of the week. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you heard is super excited to announce that we have started some really great series in our book club. Um, and we would love to continue the conversation in a special perk for our subs and patrons called um, chapter two. Um, so what entails chapter two is a private discussion with myself and puzzled and any other subs and patrons that, you know, would like to join in discord. It will not be live streamed um, and it's going to be good times by all. Um, so there are some other perks there, but we are going to whitelist our first discussion for chapter two to anybody to attend. So if you are not a sub or a patron, you can still attend the discussion. Um, check it out. See if it's something that you would like to continue with. And we hope that you do, because the more time that you spend with us, um, we have some things up our sleeves to give you. Uh, what else am I missing, Puzzled? That's when you do nope. like this. Bookmark. <laughs> um, I think you pretty much nailed it for anybody who ends up subbing to us specifically for the book club the fun part about that as well is you can sub to the official millennials channel you can sub to my channel NJ's channel Peach's channel Crazy's channel even though he doesn't stream um, and if you sub to us specifically for the book club we will send you a thank you package um, it's not going to be a lot it's just going to be little trinkets a uh, little bookmark um maybe some stickers a magnet a thank you note from us just saying how much we appreciate you and once we've been in the book club for about six months or so we're gonna have another really big announcement and we're super excited about that Ooh. so our first discussion will cover the thunderhead and the toll from the scythe trilogy and i am 83 percent of the way through the toll i am almost done with it and it's amazing i'm super excited to chat about it and that will be on april 2nd yeah has, friday has april 2nd, you, have you experienced the great resonance yet yes yeah the first one so y'all are both already in toll yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. then yeah so where we're at in the toll is Anastasia, Jericho have hooked up with Grayson, Curate Mendo. Oh shit, spoilers. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't We're real pretty spoilers. Far guys. In. We're almost done. <laughs> I'm going to have to reread Total just because it, it, we have only listened to it, read it the one time. Um, and I'm going to be really fuzzy on details. <laughs> Some other exciting things coming up. Oh, I'm super excited too. Um, our for our upcoming book the club discussion on March 19th will be over Delirium, um, so which is also a series, and we'll be, co be continuing the conversation for chapter two for Delirium on April 19th. Um, and then another event this month, we're just full of events. March 26th is our community game night. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Excited. Well, we're playing Mario Kart only. <laughs> I just wanted to start with bad cards because it's been a hot minute and that was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was We can totally play Mario Kart. Yeah, we can. Keelan doesn't have a switch. Keelan's well, left out. Have, I don't. No, we don't have two either, but you can play two on online. You want yeah. me to share? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, 
Can I just have something to myself? Gosh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go get my own, I guess. They have stimulus a check. <laughs> yeah, stimulus right. checks. Speaking about... No. Uh, or not. I had an announcement about Circle of Jerks. <laughs> so... This upcoming Circle of Jerks, we're going to be have uh, Maka737, which we're super excited about. He was introduced to us by one of our previous guests, whose name was Badger. Shout out to Badger if you're not following him. Badger, but Badger, 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 Mushroom. Mushroom. And we will be streaming that here at 7 p.m. So make sure to swing around. We got a lot of questions. He likes to play a variety of games. and I'm super excited to have the guy on. Uh, do we have any other announcements this week? I think we um, it. Yeah. that covers it. Uh, shout out to my mom. I made poopy in the potty. Yeah, he made poopy Ew. in the potty. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of y'all had a different reaction. Sorry, it's funny. It. <laughs> Clip it, guys. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> Um, we are going to be making a channel trailer, and if you guys would like to uh, clip our videos and send them to us for uh, for the trailer, we would appreciate it. We are we are grabbing clips ourselves, but we do want to involve the community because a lot of what we do involves you guys, and we love you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Favorite moment. Yeah. We're going to have some good ones from um, Community Game Night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, I'm going to go pull that one. Can we have just a little fun? I'm gonna pull that. <laughs> that's going to be that's gonna be the intro to every single one of our trailers. We can't do that. The voiceover. All right. Uh, are you guys opposed <laughs> to rating uh, Joker? He's doing his 12-hour stream. Yes. Wait, is he a smoker? Is he a midnight toker? What's up, NJ? Is he Space Cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> We're rating Joker, guys. Make sure to drop every one of least, your emotes. At least somebody got. understood the song reference. <laughs> hey, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our shout out Bye, from the producer of the week. We hope you have a great rest of your week. Shout out to NJ. Good night, guys. This, this is an, an official, official Millennials, millennials production. production.